place, I think of analog and digital not so much as what, but as hows. How is the sound represented? This is a sound. It's a ball, but it's also a sound. The ball is moving back and forth, um, and it represents a sound wave or even a molecule uh, of some sort in the, in the air that's pounding against your ear. The faster it pounds, you get higher notes. The slower it pounds, you get lower notes. The harder it pounds, the louder the sound. The softer it pounds, the softer the sound. You hear the word waveform, it's in essence, um, for the purposes of this discussion, sounds that are continuous, um, as you see the continuous line here. This is how we represent analog waveforms. If you take a look at a vinyl record and use a magnifying glass, then you'll see that, that, um, that the sound that is represented there is analog. It looks very much like this waveform. This is a sound, as it moves back and forth, is essentially is moving your eardrum back and forth and if we were to graph out how your eardrum moves in response to this sound as time goes on this is what you get as I stated earlier this trail is essentially an analog representation of the sound now we're going to do a digital representation. A digital representation is done through sampling. Sampling is just a fancy word for saying that we are counting something. We divided this paper into a grid of pre-printed squares. We identify where the wave crosses a, an intersection or some point on a square on the graph. Once we've done that, we count the number of squares there are at each intersection. So you'll see here we have uh, the first sample is one square. The second sample is six squares. The third sample is 11 squares. The fourth sample, 13. And then the fifth sample is 14 squares. Notice all the jagged edges. This is what we call sample error which is basically a way of saying that and this doesn't exactly match the sound but this is as close as we could possibly get and so uh, in this case it would sound pretty bad if we only had a uh, sampling of uh, sample value of 14. If we were able to widen out this grid and make it much larger you could um, let's say represent 256 squares then we would have a, a closer representation to the sound, but um, 256 squares represents what we call 8-bit sampling. Um, for you math whizzes out there, that's 2 to the 8th power, uh, 256. Basically, that's, all that's saying is that you would be able to get 256 squares uh, counted up uh, for a sample. There's still plenty of sample error uh, with 256. So engineers, a while back, decided they were going to go with 16-bit sampling, uh, which gives you a, a much greater number, uh, an order of magnitude of about 64,000. Uh, and then we realized that 16-bit uh, really still gave you a, a fair amount of sample error. So uh, you'll see that there are uh, representations as, as much as 21 bits or, or even more. Another thing that affects the accuracy of the sample is the sample rate. A lot of the recording devices today will do a sample rate of about 44,000 samples per second. Uh, in other words, they will measure uh, where the sound is or where your eardrum is uh, 44,000 times in one second. Recording equipment will do a sample rate of about 96,000 times per second. I um, mean, a lot of times when you see 96,000 samples per second or 96 kilohertz, you will also find uh, a 24 bit depth. And the way that your equipment stores or utilizes uh, analog is typically is in some type of uh, either a voltage or a magnetic uh, recording or something along those lines. Uh, this kind of got like this continuous flow. 
And then as far as the digital sample is concerned, it is represented uh, in a computer memory. Quite literally, we take a sample, we, we count something, and we store it in the uh, computer memory. Because these samples are actually numbers, it's very easy to do mathematical calculations against these guys to do different transformations. So if I wanted to turn this into uh, what we would call a square wave, then I could apply a mathematical transformation that would kind of chop everything off at uh, a certain point and then uh, force everything down. This is kind of uh, an idea of how compression is done. Um, and you'll notice that when you do compression, it alters the, the sound a bit. Anytime you change the representation of a sound, either in digital form or analog form, you are in, in effect changing the way the sound sounds. So just beware that um, you're introducing changes to the sound. This waveform represents a sound that has a sort of a smooth effect on the eardrum. It moves the eardrum smoothly in and out. This one is uh, more abrupt. This, uh, we tend to call this a, a square uh, waveform. And um, it's, it snaps the eardrum forward and then it snaps it back, snaps it forward, back, back and forth, right? Um, and this one is, this one gradually moves the eardrum uh, back and forth, but it's not as smooth whenever it transitions. So it's, it's kind of like a move your eardrum, move your eardrum, oh, let's change it, move the other direction, oh, let's move the other direction, oh, move the other direction, right? So this is more of a triangular wave. And each of these have their own characteristic sounds. Um, and you can apply uh, different techniques. Let's say if you wanted to, to have like a bass that has more of a, uh, you know, sort of a dub sound to it, then you might apply a square wave to it. Um, if you want to have a bass that doesn't sound so uh, rough, then you might want to apply more of a, a smoother waveform to it. If you want to introduce noise into a sound, you can grind me up a sound just by reducing the bit rate, or the bit depth, or reducing the sample rate. So um, just, just be aware that you know analog and digital, they both have their place, and it doesn't matter which form you're in. Um, either representation is subject to noise and and or artistic uh, shaping. Well, hopefully you found this helpful. Um, this is uh, information that's really helped me out. And the more that you understand about how your sound is being uh, modified as it goes through uh, analog transformation to digital transformation, analog transformation, you'll find that um, you will have some degradation in signal. Uh, some changes to the way that the sound sounds and uh, you want to be really careful about how many times you make those switches between analog and digital uh, in your either in your uh, recording environment or in your live environment. My name is Ken Nath. I appreciate you stopping by. God bless you.